we're hearing these wings deliver a, a 35% more power than traditional sails of the same size. And the whole operation, hoisting, reefing, furling, even controlling the wing and flap angles for trim, it's all meant to be fully automated. Wow. They estimate about 100 nautical miles of range just on battery power alone. Eliminated the side decks at saloon level to maximize that interior space. It What's out there? Sails up high. All right, Boat React crew. Today, we are taking a deep dive into something truly revolutionary hitting the water very soon. The MODX-70 catamaran. That's right. Its global debut is just around the corner, happening in La Grande Motte, France, at the Multi-Hole Show from April 23rd to 27th, 2025. That's uh, literally 10 days from now. Wow, 10 days. And this isn't just, you know, another boat hitting the circuit. The buzz around this one is intense. It really is. Our sources are calling it a yachting revolution and a catamaran of the future. So as experienced sailors ourselves, our mission today is to really unpack what makes this MRDX-70 so innovative and exciting uh, without getting too bogged down in the super technical stuff. Right. We want to know what it actually means for people like us out on the water. Exactly. And to get a good handle on this, we've looked at information directly from MODX catamarans, news articles from places like Interparis and Powerboat World. Okay. A firsthand report from Sail World Cruising, a charter listing uh, profile from Catamaran Show, and even a really detailed YouTube review from Naval Gazing at Camp David. Uh, good old Camp David. So we've got a pretty comprehensive picture then. Yeah, I think so. We've covered a lot of ground. Okay, so as Boat React veterans, the first thing that jumped out at me was the core concept, sustainability. Mm -hmm. The MODX-70 is designed for, well, us sea lovers to sail safely on a vessel powered entirely by renewable energy, aiming for zero CO2 emissions. That's, yeah. a, that's a bold statement. It is, yeah, a very <laughs> bold statement. And the heart of that ambition is this fully automated wing propulsion system, the AL Aeroforce. The wings. Working together with electric engines. As one of the YouTube reviewers pointed out, this means no diesel engine, no noisy backup generator kicking in. Ah. It's a true electric eco-yacht driven only by electric motors and, you know, the wind. Which, for anyone who's ever wrestled with a temperamental diesel auxiliary, uh, that sounds like a bit of a dream, doesn't it? It certainly does. They're really betting everything on this completely renewable energy setup. And it seems it's not just for private owners either. They're planning eco-charter experiences on the Moody X70. Apparently so, yeah. Really leaning into that whole eco-responsible travel idea. But, you know, still with the luxury and innovation you'd expect at this size. Okay, let's talk about these wings, this groundbreaking propulsion. What's the deal here? Well, the AL Aero Force uses two inflatable, automated, and retractable wings. Each one has a surface area of 125 square meters. Whoa, 125 each. That's that's a lot of sail area, even if it's not traditional sail cloth. It is. And these aren't your standard Dacron sails, like you said. We're hearing these wings deliver a, a 35% more power than traditional sails of the same size. 35% more power. Now... For those of us who've been caught ghosting along in light airs, that sounds seriously interesting. Mm -hmm. And the really wild part I read was they're fully adjustable and can swivel 360 degrees. That's the claim. That full rotation is potentially a game changer for maneuverability. Imagine like gliding into and out of tight spots, marinas, anchorages, just by tweaking the wings. Yeah, fine tuning your angle with that kind of control. And the inflatable tech is pretty clever, too. It lets them get that efficient NASA profile, you know, like an airplane wing shape for maximum lift. Right, the aerodynamics. While still letting them deflate and retract the wings completely when you don't need them. And the masts. They're not standard either, are they? The telescopic motorized carbon masts. They automatically deploy with the inflatable wing. Okay, so it's all integrated. Exactly. And the whole operation, hoisting, reefing, furling, even controlling the wing and flap angles for trim, it's all meant to be fully automated. Wow. No more sweating over winches or wrestling flogging sails in a squall. For uh, those of us with a few miles under the keel, that sounds pretty appealing. Definitely. And the freestanding rigging, no shrouds, no stays, is another smart touch. It lets the wing pivot right around the front of the mast during a jibe. Ah, so it goes around the front, making the jibe potentially much smoother, less drama than swinging a big boom across. That's the idea. Plus, being able to retract the mast itself significantly cuts down windage when you're motoring or just sitting at the dock. Less pitching, 
less drag. Less drag is always good. And I think I saw something about these wing sails operating efficiently at lower apparent wind angles, yeah. generating more power through angle of attack. Yes, that's a key benefit of wing sails generally. For us sailors who appreciate pointing ability and speed, that suggests, you know, potentially impressive upwind performance could give some performance monohulls a run for their money. Interesting. And reefing, how does that work with an inflatable wing? Sounds quite simple, actually. Instead of complex lines, you just release some air pressure, and there are internal lines that pull the wing shape down, reducing the area. Huh. Just let some air out. Sounds way easier than wrestling a reefing pennant in a blow. A lot less stressful, potentially. Okay, let's shift gears to the E in EcoYacht, the electric power. It's 100% electric propulsion, right? Correct. 240 kilowatt electric motors. That should provide plenty of instant torque for maneuvering, getting in and out of marinas silently. Yeah, silent docking is nice. And the batteries. That's always the big question with electric boats. Big question, big batteries. Most sources say around 250 kilowatters. One mentioned 230 kilowatters, but either way. That's substantial. It really is. They estimate about 100 nautical miles of range just on battery power alone. 100 miles? Okay, that covers a fair bit of coastal hopping or getting out of a wind hole without any emissions. Exactly. And for longer trips, they've thought about recharging on the go. Hydrogeneration? Yep. At 10 knots of boat speed, the props can apparently generate up to 3 kilowatts of electricity, basically turning them into underwater turbines while you're sailing. Smart. Using the boat's motion. Plus, there are solar panels. A lot of them. Around 70 square meters reported. 70 square meters. Wow. One source even mentioned a peak output of 12 kilowatts from the solar array alone. So sun power is a big part of the equation. Okay, so you've got wind power via the wings, hydrogeneration from the water flow, and solar power from the sun. It's a really integrated renewable system. Seems like it. They also mentioned pitch-adjustable propellers that might contribute even more to regeneration, potentially up to 35% of the energy mix under sail. They're really trying to capture energy from everywhere. Sounds like they've squeezed every possible watt out of the environment. Now, what about the actual boat itself, the construction, since we're talking eco-friendly? Yeah, that's worth touching on, too. They've used some interesting materials. The hull incorporates about 38% bio-based epoxy resin. Bio-based resin? Mm -hmm. And they claim it can be safely recycled, which is a step towards you know, more circular economy and boat building. That's a definite positive, reducing the end-of-life impact. And it's not just the resin. They've also used recycled foam in the core and incorporated flax fibers. Flax fibers? Like linen? Sort of, yeah. Natural fibers, instead of just relying on traditional fiberglass or carbon everywhere, it suggests a deeper commitment to sustainability, beyond just how the boat operates. Okay, so it's green, it's high-tech... But what's it like to actually be on? It's a 70-footer, so space isn't likely an issue, right? Definitely not. Length overall is 70 feet. Beam is a wide 10 meters, or about 33 feet. That creates a huge platform. Yeah, that's wide. Draft is 2 meters, so manageable for most cruising areas. And the total living area is quoted at 185 square meters. 185? That's like a decent apartment. Plenty of room for comfortable cruising. Capacity is 8, 10 guests plus 2, 3 crew. That's the range, yeah. So it works for private owners with family and friends or for, you know, high-end crude charters. And the look. Well, one interesting design point is that when those big wings are stowed away, the boat apparently looks more like a sleek, modern power catamaran. Ah, okay. So it has a dual personality visually. Kind of. And the interior design is customizable, of course. Owners can choose trim materials and finishes. I remember reading about the saloon spanning the full beam. No side decks there. Correct. They've eliminated the side decks at saloon level to maximize that interior space. It should feel incredibly open, airy, with huge panoramic views. That sounds amazing for onboard living. A really light, spacious feel. Definitely maximizes the main social area. Another interesting quirk is direct interior access to the foredeck. No traditional forward or cockpit. Interior access to the foredeck? How does that work? Details are a bit scarce, hmm. but it implies a different way of moving around the boat maybe safer in heavy weather, and you see that dark area right on the bow in the pictures. Yeah, the sort of central pod thing. That's apparently a very avant-garde storage solution for the dinghy, integrated right in. Huh. So they've definitely rethought the typical catamaran layout quite a bit. Who are they aiming this at? Are there different versions? Seems like they've thought that through. Three versions planned. Yeah. One for private owners, one specifically set up for charter companies, and an expedition version. Expedition. Interesting. For more remote cruising, presumably. One would assume so. Ocean Development, the builder, 
is clearly positioning it as the go-to choice for environmentally conscious sailors like us who care about our impact but still want performance and luxury. And it's already getting noticed, isn't it? Awards. It is. It's nominated in the multi-yacht category for the Multi-Hull of the Year 2025 Awards. Yeah. That's run by Multi-Hull's World and Multi-Cokes Mag. That's a pretty prestigious nomination, especially before it's even had its official debut. Absolutely. Public voting just closed a few days ago, April 20th, and the winners get announced right there at the International Multi-Hull Show in La Grande Motte. Where the boat's premiering. Talk about timing. Couldn't be better for building buzz. <laughs> We also know the first hull, hull number one, was actually launched way back in July 2024 in La Rochelle. Oh, so it's been in the water for quite a while then, getting bugs worked out. Presumably. Mm -hmm. Initial testing, and then the plan was to integrate those complex wing systems up in Lorient. Right, where all the high-tech racing hurt magic happened. Exactly. And following that, the plan was for extensive sea trials to really prove the performance and, crucially, validate those big ecological claims. So there you have it. A uh, pretty thorough deep dive from us Boat React folks into this MODX-70. It really doesn't feel like just another catamaran launch, it feels like, like right. a statement. It does. A bold one about where yachting could be heading with this radical commitment to renewables and especially that innovative wing sail technology. With the world premiere just 10 days out, it's going to be fascinating to see how it's received in La Grande Motte. You know, will those inflatable automated wings really deliver day in, day out? Can a 70-foot luxury yacht genuinely operate with zero CO2 emissions without major compromises? Those are the key questions, aren't they? Yeah. This deep dive definitely leaves us with a provocative thought. Are we maybe seeing the start of a new era where this kind of sustainable sailing tech isn't just a niche, but becomes, you know, the standard for luxury, for performance on the water? It's possible the MODX-70 is certainly making a strong case that it could be charting that course. We'll be watching closely. Definitely one to watch. Bye. Until next time, fair wind and following seas. What's out there?